The UN's top court is due to rule on South Africa's demand that Israel immediately suspend its military operations in Gaza. Let's have a closer look at what's happened with the case so far. It's a hugely divisive and emotive trial. Bring them home. Please be seated. South Africa's case at the UN's top court states that Israel's acts and omissions in Gaza are genocidal in character. South Africa believes that the publicly available evidence of the scale of the destruction resulting from the bombardment of Gaza and the deliberate restriction of food, water, medicines and electricity available to the population of Gaza demonstrates that the government of Israel not Jewish people or Israeli citizens, the government of Israel and its military is intent on destroying the Palestinians in Gaza as a group. South Africa has filed more than 80 pages of evidence to support its claim that Israel has breached its obligations under the Genocide Convention, a document from 1948 which both Israel and South Africa have signed. Israel rejects the allegation. Its legal team says the entire case is invalid. The simple reality is that the events which are the subject of these proceedings are occurring in the framework of a war instigated by Hamas, governed by the legal framework of international humanitarian law. They do not fall within the remit of the Genocide Convention. In Israel, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu had stronger words for South Africa's move. No one will stop us. Not The Hague, not the axis of evil, and no one else. The hypocritical onslaught at The Hague on the Jewish state that arose from the ashes of the Holocaust at the behest of those who came to commit another Holocaust against the Jews is a moral low point in the history of nations. The Netanyahu government, its lawyers and the military say Israel is exercising its right to self-defense in response to the Hamas terror attacks on October 7th last year. And that they are doing everything possible to protect civilians in Gaza. But well-respected international bodies, including the UN, have cast doubt over whether the huge civilian death toll in Gaza can be justified in the name of self-defense. According to the health ministry in Hamasran Gaza, more than 25,000 Palestinians have been killed during Israel's military campaign. Most of them women and children. Those who have survived thus far are largely displaced and living in conditions the UN has described as a humanitarian nightmare. To make a legal decision on whether Israel's conduct amounts to genocide could take years in court. In the meantime, South Africa has asked the judges in The Hague to order an immediate stop to Israel's campaign in Gaza, drawing praise from the Palestinian UN ambassador. The lesson of the Holocaust is not that you should defend Israel when it is committing atrocities, but rather that one should stand against atrocities regardless of who commit them and who endure them. A court order for Israel to stop its war in Gaza would be final and legally binding. But the International Court of Justice has some history of being ignored. And standing by for us at the International Court of Justice in The Hague is DW correspondent Lucia Schulten. Lucia, today the judges there will not rule on the genocide allegations. That might take years. So what kind of ruling are we expecting today? Yeah, good morning. We are expecting an order on so-called preliminary measures or provisional measures. These uh, provisional measures are an emergency relief that is thought uh, to not make the case which is at core worse, so to say. So South Africa, when it lodged its application, uh, it has asked for these provisional measures and it has been asking for a number of provisional measures, among them uh, that Israel should be ordered to stop all military action, but they have also asked for allowing more 
humanitarian assistance into the Gaza Strip, or also um, that Israel should be ordered to collect evidence for the law case later. So there's a range of these measures, and the court is free uh, to decide uh, whether it will follow South Africa and grant some of these uh, provisional measures, or whether it will um, have its own provisional measures, or also to dismiss them at all and do not order any provisional measures. Lucia, if the UN judges do rule that Israel has to stop its military action in Gaza, what would that mean for Israel? Yeah, so as I said, this would be one option of out of the provisional measures, um, but I, for which we still have to wait. But what I can say in general is that orders of the uh, International Court of Justice are legally binding. Um, at the same time, the court has no enforcement mechanism, so it can't really force uh, any state to follow it. Um, nevertheless, what you have to keep in mind, this court behind me is the United Nations top world court, so to say. So the international community is watching this case very carefully, which you can also see with a lot of states have come out on the one side or the other, having spoken out uh, that they'll follow it. And that means that a judgment comes with a certain political pressure and with a certain symbolism. And that is something that legal experts say should not be underestimated, even though there is no like hard enforcement enforcement behind it. Um, but as I said, we will have to stay a bit tuned whether there are any legal consequences for Israel at this stage and how they look like. Lucia, thank you very much. That was DW's Lucia Schulten in The Hague.